Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm still playing the Apocalypse. This is night number three and it's now pretty tough because we had that uh, we had that bad uh, something's happening card, the Bidden. So each squad lost one survivor and we have two additional zombies now in the bunker. Furthermore, because it's the third night, um, zombies now attack first, move first, attack first, and um, to defend yourself you need a six to be successful. Okay, so let's do the movement first. This is the closest bunker entrance to all these zombies here. So they move like this. One, two, three. And we actually have a movement of four. So that will bring him or these two into the bunker. And this is one, two, three four so I guess he's not yet inside the bunker just above and then one two three four one two three four and this one and now we got these one two three four three four here we go oh, this is gonna be tough and finally it's these and here the closest bunker entrance seems to be over here actually. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, that's definitely closer. So they will move now here and the first one will enter this wire trap and they will die. But we don't gain any points for that. So, and let's see now, then it's one, two, okay, let's say one of the of these two moves like that, while the other one moves like this, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So this guy is also killed. <clears throat> okay. But this is definitely a problem here. And then we have an attack. Four zombies will attack us. And because uh, they're both the same, or they're all four zombies are the same distance to both squads, um, two zombies will attack one squad, the other two the other squad. So let's start with the ones attacking the blue squad. We can roll two dice to defend ourselves. And only a six is a success. Whoa! That's what I call a good roll. Okay. Then we have the other squad, and here we can roll six dice. Also good, uh, three dies of course, and that is also good, so only one attack and because we have an armor value of eight, nothing can happen. So we were really lucky that we managed to kill all the zombies here, that was just great. <clears throat> okay. So, then it's the turn of the players and uh, I'm not absolutely sure which is the first one it might be the red one I think so this is in this case this squad here and they will attack these two zombies inside the bunker um, they have a melee skill of 10. 
So one of the survivors will actually use the Samurai Sword, which gives him three dice and a set cleave. A single success kills one double zombie, does not stack. Does not stack means you cannot use this uh, more than once per turn, this uh, option. And then uh, the hatchet comes with this ability, dual wield, have one survivor use two weapons attacking with less, with one less die. So that means you can, well, you can simply use two weapons and uh, I'm not absolutely sure if these have to be um, two weapons which have this dual wield option or if it only has to be one weapon with a dual wield option and some other weapon. Um, I will play it uh, in a way that both weapons have to have the dual wield option. I think that's more thematically. Especially for example with um, when you use firearms you can use these two one-handed weapons with a single survivor but not an MP and a one-handed weapon. I think that kind of makes sense. So now one of these guys will use two hatchets and the, the last survivor will actually use the nightstick. So I'm allowed to roll um, eight dice. That's pretty cool. Okay, so first I'll roll the three dice for the samurai sword because of this special ability here, because of the Z cleave. Uh, let's see. Okay, that is one dead zombie. And then I can roll five more dice. And there's still three zombies to kill. Ah, okay, let's roll again. Well, that's at least two hits. So, one zombie remains alive. And we gain three victory points. That's one, two, three. And that gives us two more skill points, so we're now also at eight with the firearm skill. And then Blue Squad will leave the bunker with the first action, move here, so that's one, and then they will move here onto the lookout. And then they will shoot. So let me see. One, two, three, four. So, okay, they will shoot at him. Um, with the Beretta and the MP5. Both of these have a distance of 4, while the Colt can has a distance of 6. So I rolled two dice, and now I rolled two of these. Ammo dies, and let's see if I can kill them. Oops. I hit on a 4, 5, or 6. Well, that was just one hit, and I've lost one ammo. So one zombie is killed. It gives me another victory point. And I lose one ammo, so I will discard one. Okay, and, but I got still my attack with the cult, and well, basically I can also shoot at him. That's a little difficult. Normally you should say, okay, I shoot. Actually, I think I should have said that before. Normally you can also you can only 
kill you can only attack one yeah exactly you can only attack one space with the same attack um, but because the cult has a higher range if I have now um, an additional hit then I could kill one of the adjacent zombies and that would not have been uh, possible if I had an additional hit with one of these that's why I had to roll for both weapons uh, um, um, that uh, why I have to do different rolls for both weapons. Okay, so now let's let's check the cult. Yeah, that's one hit. Oh, and of course I have to roll for the ammo. Ah, great. So I killed one here. It's not exactly perfect, but at least something. Okay. And then it's again the zombies. And they are now pretty strong. They can enter here. One, two, three. And they are in line of sight of this squad, but they are more than four spaces away. So in this case, they would not go for the squad, but also for the bunker. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this guy is actually in line of sight, and they try to attack this um, this squad up there. But uh, it's not possible for them to to attack because I'm in the lookout. If there would be four zombies around, then they could actually uh, bring down the lookout. I'm wondering, well, I'm not sure. From, from the bunker entrance to the lookout, I think that's actually also line of sight. From here to there. Nah. Well, if we take that, that point here in the middle, that cross and that cross and we try to draw a line there I think it's pretty clear yeah that's still line of sight so actually it's gonna be different now I think all these zombies that went into the bunker one two three four they will not go for the bunker but for the lookout so what does that mean now? I'm not absolutely sure. I think this one will stay here, but the other ones will go like this, like this, probably like this, and I guess like that. So they will come for the lookout and not for the bunker because at the moment they see they are here on the bunker entrance they can see me and then it's one two three only four spaces away so then they would move to the lookout which is on the one hand it's good on the other hand it's a bit of a problem because now we have to fight all these guys here at the lookout anyway so the good part is we only take one attack here from these zombies or from that zombie and he cannot do any harm because of my armor value of 8. Okay, so what I do now is um, if they bring down the lookout in the next turn, I would fall down, lose my two actions and I would take 1d6 of damage. I, I want to avoid this, of course. So, um, what I can do is I can spend one action to jump to an adjacent space. So, I guess I move, I jump down here and then I run away and I think I go in here. 
One, two, three. And I take actually two da no, I don't take any damage because I have gas masks. So I'm in here now. That's okay for me. And nobody can see me because of the walls there. And then it's the other squad. Well, actually, they would have been first, but that doesn't really matter. And this is now a bit of a difficult situation because on the one hand, um, there is this guy inside the bunker. And then, and that cast like he's adjacent, basically. All. And then there is here, on the main entrance, on the bunker entrance, is another zombie. And uh, the question is now, Hmm. What can I do? Actually, I'm thinking about... I could leave the bunker here. One, two, three... Four, do a really wild attack then with a second action to all of these zombies. That could be possible actually because this zombie here kind of blocks the bunker exit. So I think I cannot leave the bunker through this door. But I think I can move, leave the bunker through this door. So w that would be one, two, three, four, five. So I can move right into that mass of zombies. That should be possible. So let's do this. Why not? So this is one, two, three, four, five. And I think I don't take any damage from radiation because I had this mission before. That special mission here. That was... Uh, what was it? Phobic. Exactly. So I'm immune to radiation. Okay. And now I have a second action and I can do an attack here and I can roll eight dice. So first again I will roll for the samurai sword. Well, great. One double zombie and one normal hit. So basically like this, and then um, by the way, so if you do an action with a fire weapon and you attack a space, we had that situation before, and I would have additional hits so that there are more hits than zombies on that single space. Then I could um, also kill zombies on adjacent spaces to that specific space that I attacked. In melee it's a little different. If I have more, um, more hits than zombies on a space, on the space that I attacked, then I can distribute my hits to any adjacent space um, which is adjacent to my squad. So not adjacent to the target space, but adjacent to my squad. So there's a difference. Okay, and then I can roll five more dice to see if I can kill more zombies in melee combat. And I can. I can kill three additional zombies, which is really cool. So they all have to die now. Very good. Okay. So now the bunker is empty. 
So it's kind of flipped around and it says that, uh, well, everybody is killed in there, but that happened the turn before already. So, but now the bunker is empty again and I um, now all the zombies move um, move two additional spaces to the closest squad. So basically this one will stay here, that one two, that one moves one, two, three. So I think this squad is closer than that one. So that is one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is gonna be a pretty tough round for that squad. And uh, they have to defend against phew, nine zombies. And they can only roll three dice. So let's see. That was bad. So this could be the end for that squad. But uh, let's see. It's definitely tough now. Oh gosh. Yeah, they, they already went down. That's not good. Okay, so eh, we roll now nine dice. And let's see if we can survive that. Well, I think we might. We have 21 hit points. Okay, that is bad. So this now means that's a bad start, actually. We have now double Z. And for each double Z, one survivor is killed right away. And that would be actually Charlie. He's bitten and he becomes a zombie. So we have to place another zombie figure here. And we lose one armor point and six hit points because yeah, that was Charlie. Pretty bad. That's the problem with double Zs of the zombie attacks. But they're gone now. Now we have to add the rest up. So we got 10, 16, 19, 20, minus 7. So that's 13. So this is pretty bad. Oh my god. So we're down at well, a two actually, and I'm afraid that's it because there are two additional dice to be rolled now because one turned into a zombie and he can attack right away while the other one um, oh my god, while the other one actually um hasn't rolled yet so I I'm dead yeah obviously there's nothing I can do I will roll a two in any way so yep okay that's it my squad died here we go that's it maybe I was a little too optimistic here so what happens now actually the game is not over yet first of all all these great weapons, basically all items of that squad are now placed at the space where they died. So I will place this marker here and I will place another marker here to indicate this. Then I have to place two additional zombies here because that's where this squad died and that's basically it. Now in theory if there would have been some more people inside the bunker that squad could have started again but that's not possible right now. So they're out of the game at least for this turn. To be honest I'm not sure what happens. Maybe they can take a new survivor during the next turn, but uh, if a survivor is in the bunker, but I have my doubts. I think they're gone. I think that's it for them. Okay, so let's see if they have a chance left. Okay, so first of all, they move one, 
two, so they go here, and then they shoot at this guy. And they have actually six dice they can roll, and they have to roll three ammo weapons. So let's see. Ah, great. Have to roll again. Ah. Okay. So that wasn't too bad, but it was not perfect too. Anyway, so we have now here one, two, three, four kills, which is good. That brings down these two zombies, or these four zombies. But we also lose one weapon or one armor. So I can use this one, just what I need it, to use that as an armor to reload. Okay. So and then it's the zombies again. So that is one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so these two will attack now. I can try to push them away with two. I didn't manage to do that. So now I will take four dice of damage and I only have an armor value of two, which is that. So that is now 10, 12, so I take 10 damage, which is quite a lot. So I'm down at 6, I think. I think I was at 16, huh? Okay. Um, so... Well, I think the, I think, okay, what I will do now is, I will go again onto this lookout, so that is one, two, three, four, and then from up there, I will shoot basically at this zombie here and I can roll once again six dice and three ammo dice. Okay, that was not very successful, only one hit, pretty bad. Actually I forgot to take to gain victory points. I think I had four victory points because I killed four zombies during the last action. One, two, three, four, and another one. So I gained one skill point, so I'm now at eight. And then it's again the zombies. So they move now. One, two, they can attack here. One, and one, two. Okay. But they cannot attack me because I'm uh, upon the lookout. But in the next turn the lookout will break down. Anyway, what I do now is I move down here. One. And... Well, the... Actually, I will move down here. The problem is there is no line of sight. I can't fire through this lookout, but I can shoot at this space here. Maybe if I'm l lucky, I can shoot these zombies behind too. So that one and that one. But for now, I will again roll six dice and three ammo dice. So that was again not very successful. I only managed to kill two zombies. And I lost one ammo and now I don't have anything to reroll so I have to... Well I think I will simply discard 
the MP5. Or I don't have to discard it, but I. This is now the weapon which is out of ammo. Okay, and then it's again the zombies. One, two, one, two, three. And now it's gonna be tough. We have now only two dice to defend ourselves. Well, at least one success. That was good. So we have to face now four attacks. This is gonna be tough. We only have six left. And, uh, I'm probably gonna die now. No, maybe not. No, I didn't. Oh, did I? I did. That is unbelievable. Just an eight minus two. So that's exactly enough to kill me. Yeah, well, that's it. I think I was very unlucky at the end uh, with the shooting here. I rolled pretty bad. But okay, that's it. They killed my squad too. And I guess I lost. I didn't make it to four nights. I died in the third night. Damn. Okay, well actually, I think, I think after all it was, I was a little unlucky maybe, I don't know, maybe it was too risky to stand with this squad here in the middle, I don't know, I mean I was, that was really bad, that they died, that should not have happened. But maybe I should have taken some strategically better position. Um, I think it wasn't as necessary for that squad to die. That was maybe a little overconfident. And yeah, as I said, the other squad, I think there I was a little unlucky with my shooting. Anyway. Um, okay. I think this time there are some words to say about this game because it is well it is kind of controversial um, and actually as you could see I had to do two playthroughs and well, you could kind of see both sides of the game, I think. I guess in the first playthrough, I was killed right away in the first night. Okay, I played this other scenario, Families First, where you start with only one person. So your first squad will uh, probably have two survivors. And that is pretty hard with two survivors and no skills, so that is really tough. You, you probably will not survive that night. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty bloody first game and it was not fun. I have to be honest here. I, I didn't enjoy playing that at all. It was just frustrating and yeah, you had to do all these the scavenge phases, all these things, and then you start the game and after after a few dice rolls the game is over. So that was definitely not that good. The second game, on the other hand, was quite different. I really had a lot of fun playing that um, that second uh, playthrough. Um, But the problem here was, maybe on the other side, it was too easy, especially the first two nights. I, I'm a, I think there is, okay, you can't say I've lost, so how could it be too easy? But I think that was because I made some just some stupid errors. If I had played this a little more... Uh, clever, I might have won that. I don't know, maybe I should have played it in a way that I just um, stay here 
on a space where I can be attacked only by a few zombies and there I could easily slaughter them with my samurai sword and with my armor value of 8 or so. That would not have been a problem. But uh, okay, I didn't do it, so maybe it was simply stupid. Still, I think that game is not really well balanced. Actually, I think the main problem of the game is this... Uh, well, I would say that that possible strategy that you can... Um, that you can search for for supplies um, at the end of a night basically for an unlimited time simply by not killing the last zombie or the last two zombies especially after the, the second night or after the third night one zombie or even two or three zombies are usually no match for for a squad So, you can simply place a squad somewhere and lure all the zombies to you while the other squad just searches for food and so on. And um, I think that is really a problem because on the one hand it's boring, it's not thematic and it, is, uh, it makes the game much much easier. Um, I think if you would not be able to do this, um, then you would have not enough food to feed all your four survivors, or maybe eight survivors for two squads. And then you can, you have probably only squads with two or three survivors, which makes the nights much more harder. And then the game would have been, I think, well balanced. So if you can solve that that problem with the with the searching, with the unlimited time for searching, then the game might be really well balanced and it might be a really fun game. But that is something uh, you need some house rules for this. Of course, you could say, well, simply don't do it. But for me, um, that is not a real solution. If I know I could play this game better, more efficient, um, I think it's not a good idea to play, to simply say, I don't do it. I could not do that. I, that. That makes me feel stupid somehow. And this option to search during a night, I think that should be still part of the game. So simply to say searching is not allowed anymore, I think that makes no sense. Because it is an interesting idea to say, do I use my actions to kill zombies or do I use my actions to search? and let the zombies come closer. And there is also this kind of fun mechanism that you can search and that there can also appear zombies. So all this searching concept is an interesting part of the game in my opinion. So it's no solution to say you're not allowed to search during the combat round anymore and that's it. There are a few suggestions. Um, basically, the idea is you need some kind of timer, I guess. So, there was a discussion on BGG, or there is a discussion, actually. And uh, someone had an idea, which I kind of really liked, um, that you, for example, um, you have, I don't know, maybe five turns or so to do a normal combat round. And then with the sixth turn or, I don't know, some, some you have to find a, a good way that it's balanced. Then with the sixth turn, you roll a die. 
and if you roll a six, for example, then you roll a die once every turn, of course. And if you roll a six, a second horde, more or less the same size of the first horde, will attack. So in this case, it's really interesting. You have to be fast, you have to kill the zombies, and you don't have unlimited time for searching, but you might do it in a way, if you find a good balance here, you can say, okay, I try to do it in a way that I can I can kill the zombies if I'm lucky, that I can kill them all, and then I still have one or two more turns to search, and, well, basically you can't search as long as you want, you just roll a die, and maybe if you're lucky, you get five or six or seven turns without the, the next horde appearing, but if you roll a six, then the next horde will come, and uh, you have to fight them all again, until um, um, yeah, until you can return into the bunker. So something like that might be an idea. I guess that's, uh, that's also kind of thematic. And I think that might improve the game a lot. Another issue I had is that um, especially the game is very luck based that's basically okay I guess but especially during the scavenge phase it comes to a point where it it, it can be really unfair for example if you have a card like that so Say you, you roll a die and you lose the first check here, you lose a survivor, you fail with the second check, and then you basically are lost. I mean, that's really ridiculous here. This is a card that is really deadly. Okay, I understand it's kind of fun to have such a card, but it's really tough. And, uh, well, there are some other cards. For example, that one. That is also a tough one. I mean, if you roll, if you have a success here, you're really fine. But if you don't, I mean, hey, then you're really lost. So, and even if you have clever survivors, I mean, chances are that you, it's, it's easy possible that you lose that, that check. And especially, for example, during the first turn, you have a real problem. So um, I had an idea to, m maybe it could be a house rule to say um, that you can roll for each of these symbols separated. So let's assume I have a, cl a clever value of 2, so I can roll a smart check um, for food. If I have a success, I'll gain 2 food. If not, I gain no food. Smart check for items, smart check for, uh, for armory, and a smart check for zombies. So in this case, it's not all one check. You know, it, it depends not all on one single dice roll. Not the whole turn depends on that single dice roll. Um, on the other hand, it's still important to have clever survivors, or to have smart survivors. I mean, that smart ability is still vital with that house rule. Um, but I think the chances are a little better. It's a little more balanced. So this could be an idea too. On the other hand, it's, of course, it's kind of cool to do one roll and that's and it depends all on that it's i mean it's quite int it's quite intense but it it also can end up real frustrating and i think that's not 
I mean, it cannot be the wish of the designer simply to frustrate uh, the players. Okay, so I think these were the main issues here. You have these, I think you have these balance problems. Once with these smart checks here on these cards, which might not be that bad, and I think that can be solved. And the other one is that, that strange strategy with the last zombie not being killed. But I'm also sure that is also a problem that can be solved. Apart from this, I really enjoy this game. I think it's great. Um, maybe a last problem might be... Yeah, that's... Okay, if you have a... That is the squad-based game. If you have single persons, it's easier to, to, well, to tell stories or to identify with persons. I mean, it's easier to say, okay, there is, I don't know, Mrs. Kenningmar, and he, he uses the chainsaw and he managed to kill, I don't know, two zombies or three zombies in one turn with the chainsaw and it's just awesome. Or here we got, I don't know, we got here young Charlie Whitney, in each hand he's got a hatchet and he's on a bloody revenge for its sister. So that would be really cool. But the problem is you have these squats. So in some way um, it doesn't matter who carries which weapon. You simply add all the weapons together and then you roll. So it's a little harder to identify with um, to, uh, yeah, to, to identify yourself with, with, with single persons. It's harder to, to find a connection to your heroes if they are in a squad than if it would be single persons. On the other hand, it's of course more realistic to um, if you have to slay, I don't know, maybe maybe 60 zombies during a game, it makes more sense if a squad does that than if just one person does that. So I can see the reason thematically why it, it's a good idea to do this in a squad, but yeah, it brings this, this problem uh, with the connection to your heroes. But okay, I can live with that. I think it's okay, and I think it's a lot of fun. What I like is these, uh, the fact that you have these family, um, family, family relationships uh, between these, um, these survivors. This can add some really nice or cool stories to the game. If you have Mrs. Kanemar here and Mr. Kanemar, Senator Kanemar, or if you have Charlie, which is attacked by his sister who just became a zombie, and all these things, that's really a cool, a cool idea. And uh, I really like this about this game. The artwork is awesome. I think it's really great. Um, if you take a look for the first time on a board like this then you probably think or at least I did that oh, that's kind of all I don't know it's all a brown or green mess you don't see really anything it looks all weird but normally that's not the way you play this game because you start with four tiles and then this expands slowly during the game so it it's it's possible to keep um, to keep track, it's possible to to understand how this board is constructed because it doesn't happen at once. And then these dark uh, colors, they really add uh, they really add a lot of atmosphere because it is during the night. You leave the bunker during the night and it's this post-apocalyptic world 
and that is all that all really fits to this dark artwork so that is in my opinion just great um, the component quality is uh, okay I guess um, the cards are very thin really thin I suggest you you, um, you sleeve them here we have we have some warping problems actually you might see that here I mean if you if I do it like this you can see it here that is a problem here and down there eh. but and the same here with the bunker tile it's also not really it's a little bit of a problem and even a little bit or maybe a little more with the squat boards but these are all parts that are not so important the important thing are actually the the tiles and they are nearly perfect just a little bit of a problem here for example but I guess that's okay that, that's not a big deal the tiles are thick they have a very good quality and that's great little complaint I already said that it, it would be really kind if they had just put um, a few of these intersection tiles into the box so that you could also use the other side uh, during a game that would have been awesome but okay they didn't do it whatever the miniatures are okay um, I'm not such a big fan of the color of these bright miniatures I already said that I prefer the gray ones here and I'm also not such a big fan of these big bases but in general I think they are fine um, yeah that's okay I guess and uh, well I think that's it so until now um, I did not really have a game uh, well I had zombies which is a game where you slay zombies just by the dozens and that is a pretty cool game I like that um, but I think this one is actually better than zombies um, so if you don't have a game like that just a stupid zombie slay game then this might be really something for you but my expectations were in some way higher I expected something completely new um, actually since I've seen the, the the Walking Dead show on TV this whole zombie apocalypse um, reached a new level for me actually um, it's not like it's not all about slaughtering as many zombies as possible and having a lot of fun with that I mean you have here this this very dark art and uh, here the dark tiles and all that stuff so I expected something more I don't know more more deep more serious more more tragic maybe if you play zombies and you take a look at the at the cards then it's obvious I mean this is just a comical game and uh, you don't expect some some tragic stories to be told or something like that some dark stories to be told there it's just some weird humor here it's basically the same it's weird humor but you ex you might expect something different at least I did I expected something really new a game where you have tragic stories like for example in The Walking Dead where you have uh, maybe things like I don't know maybe dynamic processes inside a group where people start getting insane uh, where you have to make different choices where you um, 
where people start getting aggressive and maybe start killing each other or stuff like that. I mean, that would be awesome. That would be the game, the zombie game I'm dreaming of. And I'm really waiting for a game which, which dares to make that step. I think until now we don't have anything like it. And here it starts a little bit with it. I mean, you have in some cards, you have these decisions to make where you can say, okay, do you want to, do you want to stay outside and rescue that survivor? Or do you want to go back inside the bunker and let him die? Or do you wanna do you wanna remove some barricades to to take survivors inside your camp, or do you wanna let them outside the camp, let them die, and someone of your squad then says, "Oh no, not like that! I won't do it this way. I won't fight this turn." I love these choices. That was great, but it's. It's only a very small part of the game. You have this on two, three, or maybe four cards of this game. The general um, feeling of the game is more this, yeah, this weird humor, this this kind of slapstick things. I mean, there is this this mission actually, this daily go where you have to go out and drop your pants in front of the zombie and stuff like that, and somehow this is not what I expected. So at the beginning I was pretty disappointed, but after a few games, um, I really liked it. I I understood, I could accept, hey, this is about slaying zombies and not much more. So I really liked um, the way this worked. I liked this uh, idea of scavenging first and uh, then trading the, the supplies you found then go out and just kill as many zombies as possible. I think that was really fun and it's a, it's a good game with a great artwork, but it's not the revolution in zombie games that I am waiting now for such a long time. Okay, enough words for this. Um, hope you liked it and uh, hope to see you in one of my next videos. Until then, bye.